Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework, and today we are going to make a quick video about removing the weld seam on the inside of tube steel and then making it telescope. And uh, this might seem like an odd video to make, but I get this question all the time about how I do it and what my process is. And I have some pretty strong opinions about how it should be done based around a few parameters. And we're gonna go over all that and talk about that. Now, you may ask yourself again, why? Why are we doing this? Well, specifically, this was the thing I had to figure out when I first started prototyping uh, industrial machines. And right here on YouTube, about a year and a half ago, I built my first two by 72 belt grinder that ultimately exploded into me kind of switching my career into creating content right here on YouTube and building a business called House Made Industrial. Uh, we now build uh, and build kits for 2x72 belt grinders, and I'm sure you are all aware about the, the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder. We put out the plans, the kits. If you, if you would like to find out more about that, you can go to my website, housemade.us, and you can check out all that stuff. But one of the primary reasons for this video is because without this, this was kind of like my first step. Like I had to learn how to make this happen. And and there's so many people who watch this channel now that are actually uh, working and designing their own projects. And I don't know how many of them actually fully understand the process and how I do it. So that's the reason why we're going to put this video together today. By the way, two by two tube steel and one and a half inch tube steel, it slides into each other perfectly with the weld seam removed in the two by two. And you're going to pay about $5 a foot for any of this tube steel at the, the time of this recording. Uh, to me, that is a very inexpensive way to start building machines. You know, if you can think of anything that needs a receiver uh, and, a, and an arm, that's what this process is, is to start this process, you need to learn how to do this. So anyway, I'm blathering on. Why don't we just get started? Screw it. Let's do it. All right, let's take a quick look at some tube steel here. These are just some small pieces. These are, uh, this is the secondary tooling arm for the uh, Revolution grinder. It goes on the work rest. And this is the receiver. Um, you can see here, there is a weld seam down in there, okay? And, and that stops the telescoping, you know, from happening. It, it almost fits, but because that weld seam is down in there, uh, it is actually uh, stopping the process of this to happen. So we need to obviously remove that. Um, also, this is a 10 inch piece of tube steel. Uh, again, this is quarter inch wall. A lot of people ask me, why do I use quarter inch wall on all my stuff? And, and, and they're having a hard time finding it. The reality is, it's not that tough to find. It's just, you gotta call a steel distributor and ask them for it. They'll cut it down for you even. But the reason why I use this is because you can drill and tap into it and it'll hold a tap uh, threads. So there's not a real reason uh, to, to weld on nuts and do all that extra work. You can just drill and tap right into this. And it just so happens that they actually will fit inside. In fact, I've got one, uh, I've got a grinder body here. You can kind of see how this works. So as you can see, the tolerances are very tight. Uh, you know, if you drilled and tapped and put a, a nut into this, you would be able to, uh, you know, obviously stop this from sliding in and out. It's a really kind of a cool setup. And like the amount of steel that you have here is probably about $20 worth of steel to make this actually happen. So, you, you know, let your mind go wild with what you'd be able to accomplish with just these simple pieces of tube steel. The one barrier is that weld seam that's up inside of there, and that's stopping the process from uh, you know, us being able to do that. So uh, we're gonna talk about what we need to make this happen, all right? So you can see that the mill scale is removed from this piece of tube steel, right? Um, and all my tube steel. So how I do that is I use an acid bath. I soak all of my tube steel for 24 hours minimum before I do any of this. Believe it or not, that mill scale that's coated on all of this steel is part of the reason why it actually will not telescope, okay? And in fact, you wouldn't think it, but there is mill scale down on the inside of this two by two. So by soaking it in acid, it actually removes the mill scale not only from the outside of the tube steel, but also from the inside of the tube steel. 
And the reason why I use vinegar is because it's non-toxic. It does the same job as muriatic acid, although it does take a little bit longer. Uh, I prefer vinegar because I just leave it in the tank. I use it and just use it, use it, use it. And it doesn't bother me to have it around. Um, and it does the job just fine. Uh, it takes that mill scale off of the surface of the outside, but also the inside, which is actually really important. So uh, something to think about. And otherwise, uh, if you've ever tried to grind mill scale off of uh, anything, you know, it gums up your pads on your uh, flap wheels. It's possible. It's ugly. I personally don't like doing it. I'm building machines that are industrial, but I like them to look cool too at the end. So that's my process. All right. So now you're asking yourself, all right, get on with it and everything else. And like Brian, what kind of tool are you actually going to be using to do the work? And uh, I love a pneumatic file. Now you don't have to go this route. I mean, there's lots of different versions of this out there. You don't need to even use a pneumatic version of this. You can use an electric version of this. Uh, this particular one I get on Amazon, it's like $75. Uh, the reason I love this tool is that it is not a single use tool. It has so many other functions. I smooth out the insides of tube steel with it. I texture knives with it. Um, I can make fillets in my welds with it. There's just a whole slew of things you can do with this tool. And uh, the electric version of this on Amazon, which by the way, I'll put links down in the description, it's like 35 bucks, right? So, I mean, you know, there's really no excuse to not have one of these in your workshop. Uh, I will say though, that you're gonna wanna get the good, uh, the good belts for it. This is like a 36 grit uh, belt. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, you can get these on Amazon and all over the web. Uh, it's a half inch by 18 belt. And this is just such a fantastic tool and it works really great for removing a weld seam on the inside of tube steel. All right, now that we've got our tube steel cut to length and we've got it soaked in vinegar, we've also rinsed it down, got all the acid off of it. Uh, I use Windex or Evapo Rust just to neutralize the acid. Uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna start with a short piece. Uh, this is gonna be the receiver and this is going to be essentially the piece that we want to slide into this. Uh, I like to use a vise for this, you know, just throw the piece in there, usually with the weld seam on the bottom. That seems to make the most sense. Clamp it down, doesn't have to be super tight. Uh, I want to make sure that I've got a brand new 36 grit belt on my pneumatic file, whatever version of this you use, electric or pneumatic, whatever. Um, and then also you're going to want some PPE. Hearing protection is always a must and also dust protection. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to insert the spinning pneumatic file down and across the weld seam. And we're going to do it kind of slow. That's the counterintuitive part to this is that you would think, you know, going back and forth real fast is going to actually get rid of it quicker. But the longer you take uh, to go down and in, the more consistent you're going to be with removing that weld seam. What I find is a lot of times is as I'm removing it, uh, it it feels like I've got it all the way down. It'll slide most of the way in, but then it'll hit a high spot. So we're trying to avoid those high spots. All right, so now we're gonna give this a, a shot. You can see that we can slide this in and out pretty easily. Uh, but we're also gonna turn it 90 degrees and just check to see if we can do it this way. And, and we can. So we now know that for the most part, any which way we decide we wanna put this tooling arm in there, that it's gonna slide in. Now, in this one particular way, this is kinda odd, but in one particular uh, way this is going in, it gets stuck. So there's just something that's rubbing. What I like to do is look to see where the, you know, the rubbing is happening. It's typically happening in a spot like this. Uh, and then we could just take a quick uh, little sander and sand down those edges just to kind of get it to fit right. But yeah, that's a success. That took all of about one minute or so to get that out of there. Okay, you can see I uh, just took that pneumatic sander, used a 40 grit pad, and I took these high spots down. One of the really cool things about working with metal is it's similar to woodworking. You know, it's 
you can sand steel and grind steel, but it's it really is forgiving, and it's almost in a way uh, easier to work with than wood, in my opinion. I, I really do love working with steel because you can manipulate it, and, you know, if you mess something up, you can always uh, pretty much fix it. But uh, anyhow, so I took those high spots down, and you can see now we're, we're not in the, having those same challenges with uh, inserting the tube steel into the 2-inch and I can rotate it in every direction and it will slide in and the tolerances are looking pretty good. So that is a success. Well, there you have it, guys. This is a super simple way to remove the weld seam from any tube steel. And I hope I have convinced you that you do need to own some sort of electric or pneumatic file. Uh, I think every workshop should have one and it's a really super important part of my process of building and prototyping machines. If you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you click that little bell, you'll get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There's so many ways to support my channel. You can listen to the Work For It podcast on the Makery Network on any major podcast platform. You can go to my website, housemade.us. You can buy pieces, parts, and plans to the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project. And or you can go to Patreon and for as little as one dollar a month, you can support me there uh, or buy me a coffee or you can just simply like and subscribe to this channel. I truly appreciate you guys. I hope you're doing great and I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House and this has been Housework. Uh -huh.